Hello. That was a, a start, which we didn't think was just going to start. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we do like to do a little rough and ready around here at the CCC4AA webinar series. Um, Did you press the button? I didn't press the button. I don't know. It just okay. happened. <laughs> anyway, anyway, welcome. welcome. Um, uh, uh, oh. Oh. oh, it's you. Okay. okay, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> and we are here with our dear friend and member of a board of advisors, Marlene. Hi. And, and uh, we're, this is number 22 of this webinar series. And what we're going to be talking about today is a topic that Marlene is a master at. Um, uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, why not? masterful. Sure. Exactly. And, sure. It's, and it's humor. Okay. Um, so, but before we begin, we have a little bit of business to take care of. Steve, what do we have to take care of? This is how you spell Marlene's name. <laughs> yeah. There's we a very sure. specific accent. Yes, you yeah. have to figure out your keyboard exactly. for me. One goes this way, one goes that way. <laughs> yeah. Don't get it wrong. So, um, Marlene, you are the something at the place. I am. I am the Associate Director of Arts and Media yes. at the Hemispheric Institute exactly. of Performance and Politics here at NYU. Right, which is the longest job title and name put together. Which is quite uh, impressive, yeah. but that's not why you're here. No. You're here because of another reason. Yes, what is that, Steve? <laughs> because you are a co-founder oh, of a certain comedy Correct. Group. Well, see, comedy, we got to talk about that. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's called Fulana, Fulana. Org, and uh, we did some stuff in the early 2000s, um, but what we do still do as Latinas doing parody and satire is teach parody and satire workshops, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. comedy. I'm not a comedian. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. You know, well, let's so, start, yeah, let's start there. Let's start there because yeah. already we've gotten it wrong. Or rather, I've gotten it wrong. <laughs> no, but it's you, just, you, no, it's important. It's you important. Have, you have these very sort of specific ideas about different forms of comedy and comedy versus humor and so on and so forth, which I think is really helpful because usually it just all gets lumped together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what I think of when people talk about comedy, a mm -hmm. lot they're talking about TV shows, they're talking about stand up comedy, things that, you know, are uh, in my experience. And as you pointed out to all your books over here, like U.S. Heavy, right, the Colbert Report. Saturday Night Live, um, Richard Pryor, which have done amazing work, and that's all mm -hmm. great. And if you want to read about that, cue to Rebecca, um, <laughs> we're going to send you to The Laughter Effect, which is a report done by American University uh, that looks at the effect of comedy, named comedy, mm -hmm. in the United States, um, and how it works and how it's useful uh, to convey information, all that good stuff. But that's that's all there. So you consider all that comedy, and that's something else. Well, it's just that it, if uh, is, would you consider like uh, I don't know, um, what's his face who did the a modest proposal? Swift is that yeah. comedy? You know, is that? It's not really funny. I but mean, it's so it's, it's so that's what I mean. Like right. comedy is like you know people expect you to be hilarious like when you stand uh, up uh, and you're uh, like you know uh, comedian. Right. So oh, see, I would consider the artful comedy is this the mix that you're talking about of like the hilarious and then oh, I don't know if I like this. Yeah, that's, and then there's so really... we'll get to that. Okay, but okay, just okay. in my experience, people box in com. They think of comedy in general. I don't but, entertainment. But I, but not only that, but like very specifically, like like you said earlier, Colbert, SNL, stand-up comedy, all that kind of stuff. Just you know, mm -hmm. which is not it. We found. Uh, at a recent OSF convening with The Onion and Univision and Latin American folks okay. that it doesn't really, it's not the same. Uh, the translatability uh, is its different things. But anyway, so in terms of humor, which is what I like to talk about more, mm -hmm. um, humor, what people gravitate to humor. It's, you know, they gravitate to funny, they want, you know, they want to, oh. You, whenever that, you're ready, whenever oh, you're ready. Oh, that's so not now, but nope. okay, cool. Yeah. But you can leave them there, I love them. That's Jesus okay. and Liliana. Um, uh, and to, to to say that, you know, when I'm talking about humor, of course, and creative activism, we need it all. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there is not one right way or one right thing, right? Mm -hmm. So this is already understanding that everything works in tandem with everything else. Uh, and not everything, not one thing does all the heavy lifting. Sure. Um, so humor has been talked about as a way to, you know, got to laugh to keep from crying, right? As a way yeah, of coping yeah. with, right. with difficult situations. And also an effective way to approach difficult situations in ways that are not like, you know, you can also go and write an article, write an essay, but, you know, you, right. you can approach it and open people right. up in a different way. Well, and I think that's important because the mm -hmm. fact is when I see someone sort of lecturing someplace, I usually cross the street. 
right? <laughs> and, and, and you know, even if I agree with the person I cross the street, okay? yes. when I open up an article, particularly if I agree with the article, I don't finish it. But good, com but, you but, just read the headline yeah, exactly. and post it. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but good humor, I often don't know what I'm supposed to feel. Mm. I don't even know what the point is. Right. And so I kind of invest in a journey yes. and then boom, oh. Yes, yes, exactly. Or ouch. Or ouch, yes. exactly. No, that's yeah. so true. So the, the, um, the way that I like to think about Hillary Ouch, since you just mentioned it, um, is something that uh, starts off with something that hurts you. There's, so there's a problem. We have a problem. This is wrong. Um, and oftentimes it's ridiculous and it's absurd, right? right. And so um, the reality is absurd. The reality yeah. is just absurd. So the part of the ouch is that, is yeah. that, is the, uh, you know? So when we start off uh, Fulana workshops in Parody and Satire, we actually start with the question what is pissing you off right now? Mm. What is making you angry? And mm. so we start from there and from the brainstorm then come other things. But it is not just to set some definitions of terms. Um, it isn't the ouch of Hilary ouch for me isn't the ouch of sarcasm. So sarcasm uses irony. Irony is just simply you say one thing mm -hmm. to mean the exact opposite. Okay. So if you say, I'm having surgery tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I say, that sounds fun. Right. You know, it's, I'm, I clearly don't mean that. Right. Um, with irony in and of itself already, you have to get it, right. you know, and all that kind of it's stuff. So that it's, it's it, again, very specific time plays. You have to sort of know uh, mm -hmm. already. But sarcasm uses irony as a put down. So if you tell me, you know, I didn't really like Marlene's webinar, and then somebody says, oh, because you're such a genius, you know, it's like, it's like, wow, okay, ow, Jesus, ow. you know, like, <laughs> shut up, you know, so it's really a put down. Right. Think, I mean, Trump would probably use sarcasm a lot, right. you know, calling people, what is it, Rocket Man and Little, right. Little, and Lion Ted, yeah, exactly, little, all that kind of stuff, yeah. So it's sort of, direct, it, it's a, it's so like a weapon it's, it's a weapon but it's it's kind of easy in a way you know yeah. you just sort of you yeah. know you're putting them down right. and that's it, kind it of it build it just kind of destroys it's a it's an yeah. insult it's a, it's, used, yeah. it's used as an insult okay. and the, the the etymology is to tear flesh oh, so that should oh, give you whoa. that should give you an idea to so tear flesh yes um sarcasm I, is tearing flesh to, uh, tearing flesh and irony is feigned ignorance. Well, so, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. The tearing yeah. flesh, like yeah. That's ignorance. a new one for me. And then, <laughs> yes. So then parody, we were talking earlier before about parody. And parody is also simple. There's an original. Right. And you parody it. You do something that right. is recognizable. Right. So there's already, the, the original is already doing a lot of the work for right, you. Right, right, right. And right. it's like, That's oh, cool. people recognize right. it. And then you are changing it. You're presenting right. it with a difference for comic effect right. like it's like it's right. funny but sort of period end of story it doesn't have to be satirical so for example when we teach we always look at um eat it by michael jackson not no beat it by michael jackson and then and eat, then it, by eat weird it by weird al as a brilliant copy parody right. step by step you look scene right. by scene and he intervenes in all the little details, yeah. but you know, so but it really doesn't do anything to Michael Jackson and everything about it. Exactly. I mean, it's it's I mean, you watch it now and you're like, ooh, fat shaming. What is that? Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, it, you know, but but it but it's not. It, it doesn't seem to have any satirical um, comment on beat it right overall. So you it's can just you know, making fun. It's right. just like funny, funny. It's just like you know, like a virgin, right. like a surgeon. You know, like right. all these right. kind of stuff. Yeah. So now satire which is where I, the, the work that i love um is it uses irony right mm -hmm. which can be exaggeration and caricature and all that kind of stuff specifically to expose something that's behind Got so it. to criticize something you have an analysis here again go write your essay if you want to you know the lecture that will make you cross the street mm -hmm. but the, but the satire has to have some sort of an analysis there mm -hmm. um and it's not the the just spiteful thing of sarcasm right, right. It, it offers you something beyond something that has insights there and it usually offers some sort of information so satire can use parody it can use yep. irony it can even be sarcastic but the difference is that it actually is using the original in such a way as to point something out about the Correct. original. Correct. So in that sense, I think of it as a, a tool for critical thinking. Right. Good. Um, Can so, I tell you really quick? Yes. We, I was mentioning this before. There are legal that oh, distinctions yeah. between parody and satire when it comes to copyright. And this yes. is how I know about it. Yes. And like parody is making fun of a specific thing, like mm -hmm. that song, right? Mm -hmm. And satire, they talk about as like, a more general commentary about things, right? And like, which one gets you screwed in the courts? Satire, because you don't mm. need to use that specific example. Right. Why are you using my song? 
right. you could use any song mm -hmm. you're making this commentary right right right, right. um yeah so you know yeah, so I might do it anyway. I, and I might have remembered this wrong. So if you so want to do Google it, Google it, Google, it Google, Google, yeah. satire parody, which one gets you in trouble? So yeah. and we so, won't pay your legal fees. Yes, <laughs> so just, sure. Just mm -hmm. to let you know that. Um, so the the thing again, going back a little bit here, referencing the laughter effect, you know, just because it's there in a useful way. Um, it's it talks about satire in their case, Colbert and all that stuff. Mm -hmm as not um, something that will change people's mind on a deeply polarizing issue. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna mm -hmm. get the Trump supporters to get it go against right. him if they're really hardcore, right? And it's sort of, for, for me, it's like, that's not what it's for. You know, yeah, the, yeah. The, that, is not, that is not the thing. Um, uh, it can be for many other things, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things it could be, it could be to communicate a sense of hope. You know, you're yeah. like, Right. Make, something's making you crazy and you're looking at somebody analyzing it and like to, oh my god and you're like yes it is ridiculous right Finally, uh, you know it. Uh, or, or it can create a clothes. sense of community too yeah. right like you get it you get it you know right. like and we can laugh about it uh together laugh and sometimes it's not even laugh sometimes it really is like Ugh, you know um uh, and it can also be uh a cheerleading force right mm -hmm. for the activists that are down there like doing the thing in and out you know every day um, offering them something that um, they might want to share with each other mm -hmm. or with other people, something that um, uh, my, my collaborator Andrea Tom always likes to say, you know, something that sucker punches you and, and you laugh and then you, you allow information to get in there in a mm -hmm. different way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, other folks would say um, that it allow, it, you first uh, see it through feeling, it affects you through feeling, and then the thinking comes in, you know, in a different mm -hmm. way than you would if you have already crossed the street with your lecture. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I have really, really, really found, and maybe why they I don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'd love to see it, um, right-wing satire, um, I would love to see it because there's less out there that I, that yeah. I know of. I mean, yeah. I, I would love to see it, but I just feel like it's so hard to make. You know, it's really difficult to get an idea and to have it sharp and to have it read um because the analysis has to be there but then how you're translating that into satire also has to be really sharp for, for it to be good and for people to get it for, for it to even read and do the work that you wanted to do right. um and again as with anything else any performance any art there is never any guaranteed reaction to the work right you're just <laughs> adding something out there it may work it may not mm -hmm. um but one thing that i always ref reference is uh our late colleague Jose Esteban Muñoz, and he talked about performance, uh, and specifically, as you would say, performance uh, by the queers and people. Uh, he called it world making. And he said that through repetition, through willful enactments of the self, uh, disidentifying with this world until we create new ones. Mm -hmm. So just right. through sheer repetition and trial and error, mm -hmm. building, um, building worlds around mm -hmm. us. Um, and so again, um, uh, the the notion that we're playing the long game it is not like well what effect are you having right this moment you know there's something that you know we're all going for something hopefully more down the line well, and, and i think that the idea if satire partly is to ridicule mm -hmm. um to, to take the wind out of something so much of power is based on this idea that we're supposed to respect it we're supposed right. to it has an authority because everybody agrees right right and the long-term effect of making those people the butt of jokes ideally is to undermine that sort of authority yes power. so you can read about that in beautiful trouble mm -hmm. shout out to beautiful trouble uh they have a thing called use humor to undermine authority right. and that's and they do mention you know it's banned in some places you know right, right. puns and world right. play word play are right. banned you know in china you cannot right. use winnie the pooh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Because, did not know that because uncle no. z kind of puts himself i mean the the the, the head of the of the the government is, affectionately known as Uncle Z, and he's often thought of as a bear and sort of so. And so people have started using Winnie the Pooh as sort of a satire on his public and persona. Cracking exactly. down. Exactly. Cracking down. But you see, Pooh. that's that's like, oh, the dude is yeah. like Winnie the Pooh, you know, yeah. or like fart yeah. jokes. You know, it's yeah. not quite, you know, but yeah. it is humor. Yeah, and yeah, that is exactly. something that yeah. is, you know, that is powerful and works, et cetera. Well, you, so, you have, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, you brought a lot of examples in of like yeah. different people doing different humor. <laughs> In a different way. <laughs> yes, we're talking about yes. Yeah, so are you ready right. for this? Yeah, I ready? am ready. Okay, I'm ready watch. to talk. That's what they say. No, I mean, over do there. you are there other things Ooh. that you? Oh, Ooh. very cool. Woo. Yeah. It's cool. So, so these are uh, good friends and colleagues from Mexico called uh, Liliana Felipe and Jesusa Rodriguez, uh, and they are wife and wife, 
And for 15 years, they had a space in Mexico City called El Habito, which means the habit, the same way, both a habit and a, and a yeah. nun's habit. Mm -hmm. um, and they uh, were there night in, night out for 15 years, um, performing cabaret. So mm -hmm. it was political cabaret, political parody and satire. And they took on really big topics. So, you know, the state, like, you know, what is Mexico? You know, definitions, mm -hmm. uh, presidents, politicians. I've heard that actually even politicians sometimes used to go. Mm -hmm. And so you could see them like getting up and leaving. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> issues of impunity, religion, you know, they hate, you know, the Pope and religion and everything is done to women and queers over time, you know, uh, television, you know, so all this state apparatus, you know, mm -hmm. as Althusser would say, uh, et cetera. So nice reference. Oh my God. Yeah. See, get, school, yeah, know, see really check, it, check. Um, so this is them. What do I press this or this? That one. This one. Yep. So this is them when they got, uh, married, uh, yeah. they got married in paper dresses. Mm -hmm. get it papers mm -hmm. uh and pa and then they got divorced immediately after but they did it as a protest um and this is not working hilarious oh so there, there. we go I okay just what do tap i that. tap that yeah. so again so this is jesu as a uh, frida kahlo uh this is them performing uh at one of our encuentros you know but it gives you the kind of yeah. liliana is a masterful uh, argentine uh singer uh, and so this one is one of the things that El Habito did, El Derecho de Abortar, the right to abort. Mm -hmm. And it was like a fake um, telenovela, uh -huh. you know. Uh, and so in, in this one, like Jesus Christ is like intersex or something, you know, they're like, you know, really uh, taking everything on, like no holds barred. This is, they're, this is. You said started as cabaret and now they're working in video. No, this is a video that was in the background as they did the, the oh, telenovela in front, you know, okay, of everybody okay. live. No, this is all super live. All right. And in this one, I'm just bringing up this example. This is this President Salinas. This is Jesusa mm -hmm. as President Salinas. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was taking him on for impunity. Um, and whoa, whoa, what happened? <laughs> no, super civicos, not yet. Um, and I guess one of the images didn't make it, it's fine. Uh, so this is, as you can see, that's Tito Vasconcelos there with the high heels, you know, in drag. So this was uh, taking on really big issues of the state and impunity mm -hmm. and putting him on trial, mm -hmm. but while doing the whole queer thing, right. right? All at the same time, queer feminism, but like, let's talk about politics that are, you know, is in the newspaper every day. Right. And in this one, they would, uh, and she's just hilarious, a hilarious comic. And the audience, night in, night out, could, ask him any questions and put mm -hmm. him on trial you know so after he ended up you know it's like this w wishful thinking he would end up fulfillingly in jail you know just mm -hmm. uh every, you know. improvise well, before, improvise before yeah before we go on to the next one. Oh, but he's so cute oh no he's is this part of the same truth <laughs> no no okay. no see what really make this makes me think is that like i don't see what's funny in any of this oh, and, no, no, no 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 and it's because Oh yeah, I'm not Mexican. Right? No, okay. I don't. Good I mean, point. And the, the part of what humor is is this is so contextual, right? Correct. Exactly. So yes, and we're talking about that before too. How untranslatable it is yeah. for the most part. Place specific. Me, I speak Spanish. Yeah. Not about speaking Spanish. Yeah. You have to know the references. So I went to several uh, of the Labito shows, and I'm like, oh, it's, you know, and people are dying laughing, right. and I honestly could not understand what they were talking about. So it's this very, very local, hyper, hyper, hyper local. Yeah which is why I'm super excited to be hopefully collaborating with the folks from The Laughter Effect mm -hmm. to move their study to Latin America, Great. right? So expand beyond US comedy and, um, and look at very specific examples, but that as a main lesson, uh, and also looking at live performance uh, and spaces of world making as, as well as, mm -hmm. uh, as its own thing. Um, they actually passed this space on, and I don't have a screenshot, but um, to another uh, troupe of you know queer, cabaret artists as well, all women, called Las Reinas Chulas, uh, that took the space over. Now it's called El Vicio, so we went from the habit to the vice. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jesusa uh, it's went on with Eliana to do what they call massive cabaret. Mm -hmm. And so they would go out into the Zócalo and do huge protests with song and all kinds of stuff, you know. To, so they just kind of exploded out of their space. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and so also, uh, somebody that works in the streets. These are a, a great troupe called Los Super Civicos, uh, also in Mexico City. Um, you can check out their YouTube channel. They have lots of great stuff. This one is uh, Jesus Christ uh, goes and does performs miracles in the subway. <laughs> and so he goes to people. So this is not the state. This is now civics. It's like right. you and me. Now he's going for like 
yeah. everyday people. And we'll be like someone who's sitting in a uh, a chair that's reserved for the elderly and pregnant <laughs> women and folks with disabilities. Like, I will make you walk again. Dring! And he splashes them with holy water and coaxes them into standing up. Usually when there's like a person with a baston, how do you say, with like crutches or a mm -hmm. thing right in front of them and they were not moving. And so he sort of shames them into, mm -hmm. you know, so I, that they, to they, make the seat available, to make the seat yeah. available you know, <clears throat> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but calling a lot of attention to itself right, and have a right, YouTube right. channel. And so they've become a little bit of a, uh, the, you know, the state's not going to deal with right. it. So we're just going to do it. And yeah, we're going to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so it reminds me a little bit of the Mocus thing that yeah. Doris yeah, and you always yeah, yeah. present uh, in, from Colombia. But it's also interesting because it, it's, it's not satirizing Christ. It's satirizing the fact that we are a Christian nation, yet we don't, or call ourselves a Christian nation, yet mm. we don't act as if, you know, we should, as if we should be. Yep. No, there's a, there's another one, another subway one where uh, uh, they go to the Zapata subway stop, and they go in with two blind men. They dress them up as Zapata, and they go with their uh, how do you say the thing? The bastones to for so that they can mm -hmm. yeah, know where yeah, they're yeah. going. The and bastones. The bastones, yeah, you know yeah. the thing. Uh, and then there's tracks so they can hear. Trrr, 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 yeah. You can follow, yeah. but then look, there's a, a total obstruction. And so then they set up a shop, you know, and they're like talking about la revolucion, blah, 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 totally. but it's like, look, we can't even walk in this place. So they call <laughs> attention that way. You know, there's something about this too that you sort of made the list of what satire can do. Mm -hmm. I think what this is doing also is like identifying a problem oh, yeah. that what people might not see, right? So it oh, can bring sure. like clarity and, and, and focus onto an yes. issue that people haven't the ouch. really... Identified, yes, right? exactly. And so it might not be an ouch for you. You're not yeah, blind. Yeah, you don't yeah, notice yeah. it. Yeah. But you know, you can't even walk if you you know can't see. So yeah. so that's another example of you know folks doing things uh, in public space. Um, so then on on the interwebs, um, we all know about the yes men. So I'm not going to talk a lot about them. You can go to their site. This is something that came out of the Yes Lab. Uh, which was uh, collaborations with other groups uh, to call attention to things. So this is a uh, a website that came up. Coal cares. It's you know the coal industry saying you know we really care about kids with asthma due to our you know very clean energy that we produce, and we have the solution. So what's the problem? Inhalers are stigmatized. The solution. <laughs> Make inhalers cool, right? I mean, you get it, right? And so they have amazing inhalers, like my my first inhaler, baby's first breath, oh. uh, under the sea but breathing. Uh, and so they they. Where's the Bieber one? Just the, the Bieber, Bieber one, one was here, but it didn't it didn't oh, make it man, in. No, uh, but go. You can go to okay. their Yes Lab and find it there somehow. Yeah. Um, and they have a crossword puzzle, which uh, talk about reading between the lines. Uh, it's like, find these words. And it's like, clean, amazing, you know, all these things. And then the actual words inside are like, you know, all the horrible things, death, you know, destruction, <laughs> dying, you know. So it really, so it doesn't work. So just That's mention good. them just to say that in collaboration uh, with Jacques from the Yes Men, with Jesus Rodriguez that we saw at the beginning and Liliana, with Las Reinas Chulas, which is the El Vicio that took over the space for them, mm -hmm. and other cabaret, amazing cabaret artists, from Mexico uh, and Central America uh, and the US. We mm -hmm. went to Mexico this past oh. August to uh, work around the topic of Central American migration mm -hmm. in Mexico, which is a huge problem, invisibilized in the press. Uh, and uh, basically two problems. One is the US is making Mexico do its hard work, the dirty work of keeping the migrants out of up here. Right? So they start coming in from Guatemala and Mexico has become a sort of wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also uh, mm -hmm. people are really, the critique, right? We are hearing from activists, the racism of just regular people uh, is intense. Within and they Mexico. have a, within Mexico. So, uh, you know, you can't generalize, but let's generalize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a double standard between, uh, okay, so, oh my God, Trump, so unfair to like my people, right? So the Mexicans in the US, but then when it came to, Central Americans in their country. Oh no, get them out of here. Yeah, you know, yeah, like really yeah. nasty Build stuff. Oh, wall. Build yeah, a wall. you know, pretty much. So we went down and it was a great, great um, uh, project, a great week together. Uh, and we, one of the projects uh, that we uh, prepared was Somos el Muro. Then you can go somoselmuro.com.mx. And the premise of this one uh, was that the target was 
the everyday people, right? The everyday xenophobia. And so this means we are the wall. And we is posing as a Trump-loving uh, Mexican group, very conservative, uh, but that says, why am I going to pay for the wall? We are the wall, all of us together. And so uh, you can, you know, this says, like, how to identify a migrant, you know, and it's, like, really ridiculous. Like, it's just so offensive, right? That's the other thing about satire. Tra translate. Wait, I will, yeah, but yeah, hold yeah. on. It rides the uncomfortable. Just, I'm just, you know, okay, of course. Okay. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, supposed yeah, to be yeah, yeah. believable we as like a hate group. So, you know, they tend to have broken shoes. They're hungry. They have tattoos, and not only on their the, face. <laughs> No, this is like they, their skin tends to be dark. I mean, it's so bad. It is so ouch. It's like horrible. Right. You know, they they their face is full of fear. Uh, you know, they have a they they have a small backpack. I mean, it's horrible. I mean, it's it's just like you look at it and you're like, I'm sorry, what now? Yeah. So, but it's ridiculous, right? And they're right? hungry. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, when we were doing this, is there's so many people in Mexico that would fit these descriptions because right. they're just of a lower social class and they're right. screwed by the right. government. Right, right, so, right, you know, right. that was, that was, we were playing with that. Yeah. Um, and so this is like, a, imagine a whole bunch of people and this, in this video, you should watch it. And it's, it's got, as you can see, subtitles in English, but these folks, you know, of course, these are like activists. I see like indigenous Mayan activists. There's like, you know, a formerly undocumented activist from here from the United States. There's folks from Guatemala. There's folks from Honduras, a woman who lost her son actually to uh from honduras crossing into mexico right. so this is yeah. you know these are not in any way shape or form real haters but quite the contrary right um and so uh, this is one of the women from las reinas chulas anna francis mor uh and she and somebody says well i don't do anything and she's like well don't worry by not doing anything you are also part of the wall mm -hmm. and then she turns to the camera and says what part of the wall are you and then we we break into song um and so it's this like you know we are the wall kind of thing and parroting two different songs yeah. and so the response that we got since people believed it to my shock and actually yeah. to your point from before some people would just share the headline yeah. and didn't watch all the way through to the song and it was like so it's really egregious when you get to the song you might be like oh wait um and there was like outrage twitter being like you you know emailing us you know you racist blah, blah which is what we wanted right, right? it's exactly. perfect yes rise up yeah. you know were you celebrating at the time where you're like uh oh this no. didn't go the way that we wanted oh no no sell it no of course okay, it's okay. like that's what you want to see you want to you want you want to see it you know watched you know a bunch of times and so uh, even if they misunderstand even if they some misunderstand at the beginning yeah because because how great to know that there are people that are being like they, they are um, you know migrants oh, are amazing right reaction. yeah it's yeah, the right yeah, reaction yeah, yeah, you yeah, want yeah. them to be yeah. like this yeah. is this is horrible and then I'm not sure if they were activists did, before thinking about it before did you, know? you get any reaction of like yeah this is great I've always um, thought this uh, so I this. not that I know um, there uh, we know from uh, Amnesty International they have a they did a study and they have a, a video where like that attitude mm -hmm. they did record those attitudes. Mm -hmm when uh with the double standard about like you know mexicans versus central americans um but what then then what happened too is that ana francis was interviewed in a sort of satirical uh in a satirical news um show but she came on as real you mm -hmm. know and so the callers thought she was real you know and she was called like gloria vallarta which vaya means wall so you know glory to the wall uh and uh she came on very serious and spouting all the things right. you know ridiculously and the, the caller at length you know again really putting down until uh, like 10 minutes into it the person she was like she couldn't stand anymore the, and she was like all right somebody bring me a chancleta i'm gonna hit this woman over the head and they the jig was up and she put up her sunglasses and then they sort of breathed a sigh of relief mm -hmm. and she started talking about why we did this and the fact that there's 500,000 people that go through every year right. and that there's yeah. you know 80 percent of the women are raped and you know so all of the information and then all of the uh calls to action and who you can collaborate with and who are the groups and so we then that same day we uh, put that front and center on the website as mm -hmm. well just like this is parody and satire um so that was another one yes just one thing about that about sort of in a world of fake news yeah 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 where Good question. Like, how do you not generate more of it how yeah. where, how do we kind of understand that this is humor versus this is falsity like what's the line there 
Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I know that in Mexico, the stakes are even higher. And that's something that we were hearing in the group when, you know, journalists get killed for reporting on certain things. Mm -hmm. And so let alone, like, imagine now they're reporting on fake news. So it is complicated. But I think in the end, like, you take risks. You might fall yeah. flat on your face. You might mm -hmm. try it again. So, I mean, I don't know that... Um, uh, and satire in general, I mean, with Colbert, too, people thought yeah. it was real, apparently. I don't know how, but, you know, some people thought it was real. So, but in general, I would say there's so much crap out there um, yeah. uh, that, you know, you can't control the whole thing. So if this is something that seems right, it was also something these activists had never done before. Mm -hmm. They were all, you know, the 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 comedians and the, the humor folks, definitely. Um, but it was really good for the activists, too, to see it in a different way instead of just like the heartfelt um, yeah. which adds, yeah, yeah, yeah. which we know it should be there and the right. documentaries and it's all in tandem. Everything works together. You know, right. this alone is not going to do. So you have to then go get information mm -hmm. or, you know, at the same time. So the so, fake news point, mm -hmm. like, I think one of the things to remember is that there, when the original sort of, when we first started talking about fake news, we're yeah. talking about misinformation yep. and deception yep. to, 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 uh, to confuse and like rile people up, right? Exactly. And I think the intention here really matters, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The intention here is not actually to deceive anyone. And uh, um, you know, Steve, your uh, definition of ethical spectacle here, I think, is like mm. always a great reference point. Mm. Is like, are we transparent about what we're doing? If right. anyone took the time, would they be able to figure out what you're actually doing, or are you trying to trick them? Right? Listen, at the beginning, you're trying to trick. Right, and with then you do the reveal. You're trying exactly. So it, the whole point is, who is going to bite? Right. How are they going to react? And then you reveal. Well, and then but like, your point also is not to deceive, but to inform. Or oh, not absolutely. Not to misinform, but to inform. But to absolutely. inform through deception. So when I mean, it gets a little tricky. Well, but Picasso's thing, like right. a lie to tell the art is a lie yeah. that tells the truth, yeah. right? And it's it, and it like it, it's telling that the example you gave at a certain point in the interview, she puts up her glasses, and says. But wait, this is really what yeah. happened. Yeah. Right. No, exactly. And so that's all that's also all on the website and stuff, yeah. you know. So and that's key difference. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, that yeah. is like the defining difference. Yeah. Yes. Because the fake news depends upon you never knowing, never getting it. There's no joke. There's no, no, that, no, no this doesn't sense. really work unless you get to a point where you say, Oh, oh ouch. Yeah. And yeah. it's right. fake because it's meant to misinform and deceive, right? Mm -hmm. Like the the they're not Otherwise, it would be called news. You would be putting out <laughs> news, like right. informing people right, of right, stuff, right? right? Yeah. Anyway, no. Yeah. So it's the, yeah. the fakeness of it is actually what makes the humor. Correct. In, in other words, the fakeness of fake news is if that gets revealed, then the whole project falls apart. Yes. Yeah. And also the, the, the tool, the satire's primary role, as far as I'm concerned, is analysis, critical thinking, and revealing something. I mean, right. that's like the yeah, whole thing, right. you know? So if you, there's nothing there that you're attacking and revealing and saying, this is the actual ridiculous thing, right. then you're screwed. It's like, oh, really? That really offended you? Go do this other thing, you know? Go collaborate with something else. So this is the real problem, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's uh, just another way of analyzing yeah. and putting something out there. So I am ready. I'm ready. Okay. It's, uh, it's uh, so this is now different. This is uh, a yeah, this is this, this is a landscape, you yeah. know, painting in like a museum. Beautiful. Yeah, I think so that's, that's our desktop in... on my computer. Oh, now. sure. Yeah. I thought that's... it was. You know, when it was up earlier, I thought it was the desktop. <laughs> I was like, oh, Steve's getting really modern. Could be. Could <laughs> be. So uh, we've all seen that kind of you know American landscape. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Uh, oftentimes, help me with the thingy. Bing bong. Bing okay. bong. Okay, you know, with this one is like something like something something with the Indians. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's like no, it's, it's like, like the there's like deer in the previous. Yeah, one. right too. So uh -huh. have, Nature, now right? We have yes, other, the landscape. The anyway, exactly. so this was from an era where you know it's like oh my god, you know whatever. I think 19th century maybe. You know, it's like the, Hudson River the Indians there. are dying. Oh, Excuse me, I am speaking. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. Okay. So, um, you know, like they wanted to preserve the customs of the Indians because we're clearly going to kill them off. And I mean, it's just horrible, <laughs> right? This is this was this project. Yeah. And so, one of my favorite, again, you know, queer First Nations Cree painters is a, a person, a guy called Kent Monkman. And so, look, another landscape, right? Oh my God, here? amazing. Yeah. So, if you look really close, this is called the Trappers of Men, and. Uh, uh, this is a detail of it. So if you take on, uh, you know, this colonial landscape, yeah. Kent is doing a real flipping here. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. It's like all of the things, yeah. except when you look at it, um, they're all mesmerized by, I think, I think her name is like Miss, uh, Miss Chief 
Eagle Testicle or something like that. I think that's her name. It's also a, a performance persona. Uh. So these are all like the Lewis and Clark types, you know, like yeah. sort of mesmerized and a very homoerotic white people, you know, there. And then randomly thrown in like, you know, painters, but not yeah. randomly, right? There's like yeah. who constructs the narrative. Yeah. Of course, these were not the actual ones constructing the narrative, but not, at least not Mondrian and whoever that is, Pollard Paul, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, it is that Kent is looking at this is really another great. one, another painting, and so see, there's a, a painter as well. Yeah. Uh, and when you look, oh, well, I don't, I don't have a detail, but when you look closely, again, it's uh, high red boots, oh, yeah. you, you know, painting yeah. all of the naked white men. So flipping that script completely. That's great. And there's another one. This one is actually oh, the one I just showed was the title is actually "History is Written by the Victors." It's like this is what I'm talking about, right? And then this Those one. Victors know how to have. It. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is called "Artist and Model" or something like yeah. that. Um, again, there were so many paintings generated, super colonialist view of the natives and their native habitat, all that stuff. So this is like, and it's like, uh, you know, First Nations queer view, flipping it like amazing. And if you look at them, you can Google this, uh, but you when they're on in the actual museum walls. They're huge, like mm -hmm. the trappers right. of men, in like ornate, amazing frames. So you wouldn't even, if you don't look closely, you might not even know. You right. might just like, oh God, another landscape painting. Right. So if there is an element of surprise and un this unexpected thing right. that right. happens, and you're like, oh, you know, what is this saying, right? And so that, that, that surprise is something that we talk about a lot. The idea yeah. yes. of that if you're walking down the street and you see a protest and you know it's a protest, you you assign it protest. Ah. If you see politics. And know it's politics. Correct. You're like, ah, that's politics. And you usually just either turn it off, avoid it, yeah. or maybe accept it. But there's nothing happening there. Whereas this, the beauty of what this is, it's like, oh, look at that. That's ho oh, whoa, what's <laughs> right. going on here? Yeah. And no, in exactly. that moment, and we talk about this a lot when we do our work around cognition, you're remapping the way that we make sense of the world. Yeah. And so that's to make sense of it new. And we actually talk to like cognitive scientists who talk about. Hmm. You can't learn anything unless you're surprised. If things happen the way that you expect them to, yeah, then you have yeah. learned it, right? Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. I will say that in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for that tip. Um, cool. So then, so th that one of my favorites. Uh, right. And then, so another thing that, uh, oh, there's the detail. There's, which is, yes. just, just now get some butt. See. Right, see, nice. now there you go. Yeah. Pretty nice, right? You remember Jacques um, from the Yes Men? Yeah. One of his first acts was he was programming. Oh, yes computer games and he would put in a hey, men kissing men, and men kissing and yeah. doing go go dancing. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So now this other one again in the space of a museum. This is Guillermo Gomez Peña and Coco Fusco back in the day, 1992. Again, classic. a classic performance art piece, you know, within spaces that were very complicit with the colonialist narrative, right? You know, space of museums, you know, history is written by the victors. And uh in the in this case it was the five hundredth anniversary of the quote-unquote discovery of America, of the Americas. And mm -hmm. so uh, there is this uh, tradition, of course, of putting people in cages and displaying them in a very colonial way. So the couple in a cage or two undiscovered Watinawis or two undiscovered Aborigines, depending on, um, it's been called many different things, had these two in there uh, performing very um, authentic things, you know, authentic rites. And so the the person in the front would say, oh, you can come and like take your picture with them. And they will, they were speaking in tongues, or, you know, Guillermo at least was like making up a language. Um, uh, they supposedly came from... That picture... Yes, it's in I Spain. If I remember right, yeah, they did it in, in Spain. Spain. Yeah, yeah, so then, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so then, and, and there, there's a documentary actually, the link, uh, there's a documentary on Vimeo. Great. So the where it gives you the whole story. Ah, okay. And so some folks are uh, really like, well, I don't know. How do they sleep at night? And what do they do on their day off? L literally, I don't know when their day off. What do they mean by that? Uh, and then other people are like, well, this is a slap in the face. This is, you know, some people get it and some people really, well, really don't get it. Okay. So that raises a question. For me. Yes. I love this piece. It's a classic. classic. Everybody who does performance studies is yep. just like thing. And part of me feels like this is making fun of people it's laughing at people not bringing them like into the, the laughter yes yeah. i don't it's agree like, ah stupid person 
you don't get what we're doing. I, I think first and foremost, oh my God, museums, what did you do? Like, how are you complicit in this entire project that did all this damage, right? So like, I think it's also in dialogue with that. Then people that are there, I do think it, leftivism, it all does the same thing, right? For folks that believe, um, how are you gonna get the reaction? Then what are they gonna do when they find out it's not the case? So if you're caught in, in a racist posture or in an assumption that like you yourself catch yourself in, hopefully, I mean, I don't know, I can't, I wasn't there, I can't tell you, mm -hmm. they all found out, but I'm hoping that a majority found out. Uh, it's, it's, it's still a commentary, you know, they could have gone and like, you know, written something about it, but you know, this is something that puts it right there front mm -hmm. and center. Did you choose to take your picture with them? Did you cho choose to pay $5 for the male to show their genitals? Mm -hmm. You know, all this kind of stuff. So I do. Is that part of it? Yes, it was. Whoa! Yeah, there's a photo in here somewhere, I think. Uh, they're from Guatinao, which yeah. means what now? That's all it means. It's Guatinao, you know, what now? And then they're Guatinaois. So there's the genitals. So, so Guillermo, in yeah. classic Guillermo pose, you know, uh, shows the genitals. And then fittingly, the, you know, this Aborigine is uh, reading, you know, Christopher Columbus, you know, <laughs> for, for kids or something there's like that. There's part of me that's like, how could... How, could how can you, you not get it? Get it right? I know. How could you believe that this is? I know. How can you believe that well, we are the wall is real? And maybe that's what makes it again the ethical part, which is they're giving enough clues. Yes. Yeah. And so it's not like if you if you don't get it, then you really are. <laughs> you <laughs> gotta go check should, yourself. Probably should be laughed at. Right. right? Also, right. it is at a museum right. where yeah. you should expect to encounter yeah. things yeah. that you have to think about. Uh, yeah. But it does bring up <laughs> it, it, it does yes. bring up the question about sort of when you're doing this sort of work yes to think about am i bringing people into the joke yeah or am i actually laughing at people right and so i think and as they always say punch up not down right yeah. so yeah the, the the real butt of the joke but no the real target is the structure the power colonialism you right. know little things you know the country and the whole world going crazy over the 500 years that's the point, right? right? This is like, what? why do I have to keep hearing discovery, discovery, discovery every day, right? right uh, as right. if like there was nobody here, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, you gotta do something about it. And so I think that that's the real thing, the real mm -hmm. uh, target. And then yes, there's some folks because it's uh, a proto-laftivist, you know, action, you know, yes, if you believe it's real and you got hoaxed or whatever, mm -hmm. then you are inadvertently being, not, not inadvertently, but as part of the, you might be part of the whole project. So yeah, but the, the, the point is not to laugh at people who, um, just to laugh at people, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, what's our, what's the larger the mm -hmm. larger problem? Mm -hmm. And how are, and how are they, or are we complicit in it? Mm -hmm. While we talk, I just wanna yes. ask the audience, yeah. if you have questions okay. or comments or thoughts, yes, type them in. Rebecca is hiding on the other side of this computer Hi. here and she will um, relay your questions to us and since you're here in person Rebecca maybe you can just read them to us uh, so type in your questions and uh, yeah yeah in the meantime I can tell you about so uh, I, I had a, I have a student right now that I'm working with who is studying the history of like clowning in Eastern Europe which mm. is also very political and I, we were talking about this before but the difference between a clown and a buffoon and what they do and like, you know, she's not thinking of circus clowns. She's thinking of like, you know, coming from this history of the court jester mm. or, um, or, you know, and the jester could say stuff to the king that no one else would say. And, um, and so clowns have, I, we, we have this whole working definition now where like, you're meant to laugh at them. But at the clown. At the clown. Mm -hmm. A buffoon laughs at, is making mm. fun of you, right? Mm. Buffoon's ugly. The clown also has sort of exaggerated features, right? And there's these places that this shows up again and again. I wish I could remember all the different details and the distinctions. You're talking but about Borat as a Borat a buffoon. is a buffoon, right? Borat, mm -hmm. Borat's mm -hmm. kind of ugly, and mm -hmm. and he acts in this crude way, but he's really getting people to. He's making fun of the culture that tolerates him, yep. that mm -hmm. encourages him, or gives him permission to do things that he shouldn't be able to do, um, and. And that, the, and you know, comedy has this history of these different characters. Like, would you, you said that, that something about ignorance, like, the, um, there's that old character of, of somebody who's, who thinks they're very powerful, but also is very ignorant. Yes. I said that? You called me it earlier, I think. Or I said, <laughs> I like that. I can't remember. I identify with it. It's a, it's a role that I'll play of like, Oh, oh I didn't know, like, yeah, right. I didn't know about that. Yeah, like, like you how play the does that work? Yeah, the coolest white guy. 
Yeah. It's like, don't, yeah, yeah that yeah. precedes you. You don't yeah, have to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be there for you. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's part of the thing. Yeah. But, like, I'm, I'm going to Australia in tomorrow um, oh. to do the capitalism sign. And that is, like, a thing I do all the time where people are like, no, it doesn't work because of this. I'm like, what is that? Right. And they're like, <laughs> Oh, you know, and then they, they're like, you have to know this, you know, I'm like, but why would that be a problem? You know, and yes. I just pretend. No, that's good. It's better than mansplaining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be really bad. Playing yeah. the ignorant, that's cool. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's but good. it's like it, that tradition in comedy of, of like this powerful person. I mean, I'm not yeah, necessarily yeah, yeah. doing the power part, but powerful person <laughs> who um, is ignorant is yeah. like, that's Colbert, right? Yes. That's yes. the Colbert character. Yes. And that goes back to like, Mm. for hundreds and hundreds of years mm. the Commedia dell'arte in Rome mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. and it, and so anyway there's mm. all these different little um patterns and stuff yeah. of what we find funny and how we can use it yes yes and so one thing that just that just uh that I just thought of which I was talking to you about before I didn't study any of this so if anybody ever watches this now or later in the video like just because you don't know all the references yeah. to the Commedia dell'arte and to the this and that and the buffoon and then oh, it, it doesn't matter you know, you, like you just do it anyway. Knowledge. Do it anyway. It's, yeah. You know, yeah, it's from teaching it and from uh, you know, it, it's an amazing pedagogical tool if you want people to think critically. It's like, all right, make a satire. You would be surprised at how hard it is to think about exactly what you are attacking if you have to do it through uh, through satire. Well, that brings up some of the questions. Yes. Yes. Well, first I of all, we just want to make Rebecca read it. Rebecca, Rebecca you want to read, read it? Yeah. You will read it. Yeah. Shout it out. Can you hear? <laughs> Are okay. you no. thinking about Celeste's question? I was not, but you you whichever Celeste's one you think, Zeph's you're the question. producer. Yeah, no, Zeph's question is great. So Zeph asks, any suggestions for shy people who want to get better at public intervention projects that require performance? Shy suggestions people. Suggestions for shy people. Could you imagine? I, no, no. Like, <laughs> I mean, no, I would say you write it, you know, like they hmm. write, you write it. You're behind the scenes. You're imagining the thing. You're, you know, mm -hmm. you're the one thinking all the ideas and then you give it over to the non-shy person. Yeah, I have a suggestion. Oh yes, what is Wear it? Wear a mask. You can get away with it. It's yeah. amazing what it does. Yes. Mm -hmm. right? Or like a costume. Right. So, or play so, a persona. Yeah, play, play a persona. persona. And Nadine, another mm -hmm. participant, she suggests taking improv class. Oh, <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, that yeah. is a good but one. But like Billionaires for Bush was remarkable yeah. because you got people that would just get right. into these right. characters right. Right. and just it would go on and on, and right. this has happened often in our workshops. Is the person who's really quiet, the policy kind of mouse. All of a sudden, you give them, you make them into a carnival barker, and they're just drawing people in and so on. Right. Oh, I mean, a, yeah. But that character was really defined, right? It's mm -hmm. like it's there's a there's a billionaire. We all yeah. know what billionaires yeah. do. They had these signs that were, you know. So it's just I feel like you're shy, you're just afraid of doing something, but it's like so set. It's so like that you might be more more comfortable you know one of the things i would also say is like have a buddy right mm -hmm. it, that i i've done that when i know i'm gonna get scared mm -hmm. uh like especially working like before i got here you were like oh my god you guys <laughs> yeah. Yeah. steve you come over here stand <laughs> next to me yeah, my uh, a little scary. yeah but like when i was working in south africa and like i was afraid we were gonna get kicked out of this conference center for what we were doing mm -hmm. and i had somebody with me that was south african and i and i would kind of look over to her i'm like are is this okay? Like, we're not going to get, um, she's like, we're doing this. And I was like, right. Okay. Yeah. We're doing this. Like I can't bail. If she wasn't there, I might've bailed mm, out, but like she was there get a buddy and up. I was doing the same thing for her. Oh, right. That's cool. So, okay. Yes. What else you got, Rebecca? So Celette, our friend Celette asks, yes. Hi, Celette. can you expand upon thoughts on the expose effect in live actions? Like when a person agrees with the satirical, the satirical content, rather than gets it or reacts in opposition to it. So let's just repeat the question real quick. So the question is uh, like a sort of backfire effect, right? It's like if someone understands the content literally instead of as a satire. Is that the question? If it's understand, yeah. if it's understood literally? In a live action. I think she's saying like, what do you do in that kind of right. Yeah, for an audience that maybe walks by and misunderstands it. And touches yeah. the genitals and yeah. like takes the pictures and all that stuff. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess you are ready for that because you decided to perform, you know, in live action. Has that ever happened to you? Or so you're doing satire sure. and there people believe yeah. you? And... Well, sometimes we don't know. People just kind of walk right. by and they take it in a second, just keep moving. Mm. I know what's how people have walked by and be like, are you guys shooting a commercial? 
<laughs> it's like, no, yeah, because people here. are always trying to frame it in a yeah. way that right. they understand it. Yes. And it is harder on the street when you're trying to pull people into a performance. Yeah. And, you know, when you're reading, say, Swift, you can yes. count on someone spending 15 minutes right. or something. And it's hard grabbing people's attention on the street. And watching so, a video that can replay it, right. you know. So yeah. what, what sort of ways can you immediately let them know that Let it's know. that it's not i don't know i've not the yeah. i haven't done that i haven't yeah. gone out in the streets and been like oh i'm pranking you into something in the live i've yeah. never actually done that i would imagine that you probably don't want to break character so again yeah. to back to the buddy if yes. it's really like all right someone's about to punch this person because they believe it somebody might be there be right. like hey just so right. you know this is they're doing satire so one of the things at uh, billionaires that we did was we had a pamphlet that said who we are and it's you know, we're billionaires for Bush, people of wealth, including our own interest group. Yes. And then it, underneath it said, who are we really? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so then yeah. that became this double thing. I think Andrew came up with that idea. And it was a great idea because it put the reveal into the thing that they were yeah. going to take away. Yeah, the time before the dinosaurs, right? I mean, people don't read anymore. Right? <laughs> True. That was time before the you dinosaurs. Know. Way I'd back also when. say, like, when I think about teaching, mm. I want to reach every student in the classroom. But mm -hmm. there's always yeah. one or two that I, that are, and as far as from my point of view, like hopeless, right? Like because you guys. because you up of on, something that's going on, on in on their the life, that's crazy. or like what they bring, right? Okay. I cannot. It, I try to reach them all, but if there's two I can't reach, that's okay, right? If the other eight, right. you know, eighty percent or whatever, ninety percent are like, this was a great class. I really enjoyed it. I'm like okay right that's good that is a success mm -hmm. and that that your success doesn't have to be a hundred percent success so if a few people misunderstand it it might not have to do have anything to do with your what right. you've done right, right? they're just right. in a weird headspace or reading information yeah. or came from a just were in an arguments and then saw this and decided now i'm going to kick the dog right yeah so I don't know. That's how I kicking think about dogs, it. giving up right. students. I'm yeah, traumatized. Yeah. So we're actually pretty much at time, but I just want to end Are with we? Roberto's. No, with, with Roberto. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Rebecca's shaking her head. So yeah, Roberto says um, Marlon is awesome. Thank you for a great webinar. I oh, agree. Yeah. Can you get a better response to that? Thank you, Roberto. Yes. Thank you, Roberto. Exactly. Um, um, and you are awesome. Oh, and this thank is a you. great webinar. And, and we too. have to bring you back because. To fight. Yes, we're going to have a fight. Oh, we're we're going to yeah, fight. We're going to do the. Yes, the knockdown. we're going to fight. Um, yeah. I, you guys no, we won't fight. I'm going to be out of town. You're going to be out of town. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, we'll fight. We're not going to tell you what we're going to fight about, are we? No, no. Okay. You just no, no, it's just going to be a fight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, it's good. So um, uh, I wanted to mention a couple things. Um, you'll just have to endure this. Uh, yes. So we are planning here. We're going to schedule some webinars. Are you doing your Easter one? We're doing the unorthodox Orthodox Easter. That's, Easter. Yeah, that's coming up. There'll be a very special unorthodox, East, Easter. unorthodox Easter edition of the webinar. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to figure out a way that we can have a more involved webinar where you talk to other webinar participants Ooh. this has come up a couple oh. times in the last week and we're going to try to make it happen so that will not be called a webinar it will be called a special online course because it will be different um, so two of you will be given up on just you know don't even <laughs> and just like don't even log in because you yeah. know this guy two of you you won't be able to help but the rest it's going to be great <laughs> i'm just for all of committed to that yes. and i'm going to try for 100 percent uh, but yeah, it'll be um, a mix of uh, talking to other webinar participants, having discussions, and then meeting back, talking to the whole group. It'll be a little bit longer, and it will be, you know, uh, less of us talking and, and more mm -hmm. of you presenting a little bit. So cool. keep an eye out for that. You'll be on our mailing list, and, and just look out for that one. Um, the other thing is, if you're in Australia, I'll be in Melbourne starting Monday. And uh, the Capitalism Works For Me sign, which is... I don't have a picture of, maybe you know what it is. Oh, uh, we got a picture right there. Cool. Yeah, it'll be in uh, Melbourne. I'll be in Melbourne for the Festival of Live Art in Melbourne. So say hello if you're there and or tell your Melbournean friends. Um, don't come, it's going to be on vacation. And so if you're on vacation, you can come see me, <laughs> by me, and yeah. we'll kind of hang out on vacation together. It'll be a less interactive uh, experience, <laughs> a lot less discussion, <laughs> just a lot more sitting around. But yeah. this is all to say that we will not be doing a webinar next week, but we'll be back the week after. Cool. You, you will. 
I will. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can be is that unorthodox, okay. orthodox, or something else. Or is it our fight? Oh, maybe. maybe we can have yeah. a fight. Round two. It's not really a fight. Yeah, it's not really ding, a fight. Ding. Well, we can, make it. Uh, we can make it. We can make it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Um, thank you for all your questions and your uh, your participation and joining us today. And thank you, Marlene. Thank, thank you, Marlene. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have to have you back. Yes. 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 Let's do it again. All right. Will you hit that button? Bye, everyone. Oh, okay. Oh. Which button? The one, the red one. Uh, this not that one. one. This one. This one. Which one? Oh. That one? Okay. Yeah. Up there. That one. That one. one two, bye. three, five. Boom.